Welcome to this session dedicated to Azure Security. During this Surrey of Online event, we are going to cover a series of uh, topics dedicated to how you can leverage Azure technology uh, to improve the level of security of uh, applications that you might already have in your data center and you want to make available into the cloud. My name is Arno. I'm a cloud architect in the partner team at Microsoft and I'll help partner while they are adopting the solutions with their customers. So the objective of this session is really to understand uh, why is Azure your most secure data center ever? How uh, you enable that? What are the different technologies behind that? And what are the security and compliance offering that you can uh, leverage when you're deploying your solution into our cloud platform? So the agenda is pretty much simple. First, security and compliance discussion, then architecting for enterprise security. Then we're going to cover security and operations in Azure, and we're going to discuss one of the latest technology that we put available in the cloud, which are basically Azure Security Center, Azure Firewall, and the CM integration for uh, Azure and your security solutions. So let's start first with the Azure uh, security and compliance offering. Compliance is a very important aspect for, for us. And security into the design and operations start with uh, four fundamental uh, pillars. One of the very early thing is security is at the center of our engineering process. You may have heard about that. The security development lifecycle is really how we develop our software and we put them available for our customer. Now it means that from the very early design phases, to the first prototypes, to the testing, to the release of the code, security is in mind of the engineers all the time. So this is a process that we, de we developed, we are implementing and is mandatory. And of course, Azure is probably one of the biggest software projects we uh, ever done because it all software defined data centers. In terms of infrastructure security controls, a lot of things start with the physical security layer. So how do we operate the data center security? How do we have strong access control, isolation of um, the facilities, having uh, uh, accounting for everyone accessing the building, pre-screening? Of course, no one at Microsoft has access without pre-screening uh, to your um, uh, customer data and to, your, to our data center facilities. It's also about enabling the technologies that are uh, providing the secure foundation and the security of the physical layers. So how do you enable the multi-tenancy at the hardware layer for the compute, for the network, and for the storage? So for the compute, we of course would rely on the physical isolation of the uh, virtualization CPU uh, calls. For the network, we of course use um, uh, network virtualization, so uh, NVGRE or VXLAN are the technology that we leverage to isolate every customer workload into their own uh, workspace. Then we have a set of technology to protect the network, and we will discuss uh, that in the next uh, few slides. And of course, there is data isolation between the different tenants, and, um, and the data is also encrypted. Uh, if you want to enable that uh, at different levels in your um, tenant. In the security operational controls as well, a lot of things that um, we do. So we have a prevent and assume breach strategy, which means that we make everything possible to prevent the breach, but we assume that the breach will happen, which makes that every uh, possible aspect of our uh, security is based on assumption that one layer will fail, so having additional protection at every possible layers. It's enforced by blue team and red team that are here responsible for hacking the system, finding remediation for the hacks. It also means that we have independent uh, pen testing uh, reports. We make those reports available for you externally as well if you want to consult them. It's also providing you with the necessary element for incident uh, security incident response, so providing you with the log and the trace that you need to do your investigation and dedicated to provide you that. It's enforced with strong access policy and control, as I mentioned, strong isolation, logging of every possible action that is made, and also giving you the possibility to uh, design the security and role-based access control models for your subscription access. 
From the cloud perspective, we're also offering threat protection and um, uh, forensics. So every uh, traffic we analyze and we prevent protection and we uh, give you guidance if we detect anything uh, wrong. And as you mentioned, compliance is one of the very fundamental aspects as well because we uh, want you to be absolutely sure that we are doing the right thing with the data center operations. And for that, it's very simple. We relying on independent audits that we uh, work on and we provide to you in order to ensure that we are doing things correctly. So in terms of Azure compliance engineering, so it comes with having in mind in the design and in the way we release Azure services, all of those standards that you would expect. So the ISO standards, the NIST uh, standard, FISMA, FedRAMP, uh, HIPA for the health, and all other uh, regional and uh, more industry-specific standard that will, uh, that will be applicable. It comes also with taking your customer feedback on what are the requirements that you need to put your solution uh, inside a cloud. Aside of that, we design our Azure compliance framework and that leads basically to then uh, uh, auditing by independent vendors that we are doing things correctly. So the end result would be certification for, as we mentioned, a couple of those uh, standards. So ISO 27001, uh, SOC 1 and 2 and 3, uh, HIPA, uh, EU, etc., etc., EU DPA, etc., and GDPR. So those offerings are here to basically making uh, sure that uh, we are offering you uh, uh, some certification that you can rely on. Uh, those certifications are present to talk about Azure uh, bits and that helps you a lot into the compliance of your solution. But keep in mind that for many solutions, you will need to go also through the certification process for the parts that you are deploying. If we talk about IaaS infrastructure, uh, for instance, there is a whole part of uh, the virtual machine administration and virtual machine security and encryption that you are still responsible for. So you need to ensure that this is done uh, correctly at your uh, level. And for that, we provide you with uh, additional guidance as, um, as well. In terms of the certifications that uh, we use uh, uh, and uh, that are important, of course, there is the uh, Singapore IMDA certification. So the MTCS uh, level three is the, the highest uh, level of certification for cloud, which we're having and we have renewed uh, multiple years already. It's a set of uh, controls that are uh, uh, largely inspired of, um, of ISO but are complementing it into some, some aspects. So it covers Azure for the different services that, uh, that we have and it, calls, it covers also uh, the PaaS um, element and some of the SaaS elements. So what do we provide you uh, with in terms of Azure compliance documentations? There are two important portals that we're going to see in a minute. First is the Trust Center where you can see general information regarding the certification and what do they provide to you. And the other one is the Service Trust Portal, which this one is not a public portal, you need to be authenticated. So that's available for Microsoft customers and partners to download the compliance reports. So you can go there, download our guidance on how to be PCI compliant. Uh, you can download our reports of uh, the audit, for instance, for the uh, ISO 27001, for the SOC 2 type 2 report. If you want to learn the technical uh, controls, then you can learn and download uh, how we are compliant with that. It also comments on some of the guidance that you would see. So for instance, what Microsoft's response for the CSA CCM uh, matrix and for the FISC uh, general uh, guidance to talk about a Japanese uh, customer, then you can see also our whole set of responses for that. This is all available in the service trust portal that we're going to see in a minute. On the service trust portal, there is also a set of documentations which are more guidance on how to be uh, compliant. So if we take a very good uh, example of that, we have the uh, blueprint for PCI DSS compliant. And you can see that during uh, this uh, blueprint, you have all the necessary uh, guidance and you have the link at, at the bottom to, to download this to provide you the guidance around how do I create my virtual network? How do I create the network security groups that are behind that? 
then how I create my uh, resource group and the right uh, resource group access control um, delegation. Then providing on the back end, what are the components that I put at work? So of course I would use Azure Automation, Azure uh, Runbooks. I would use OMS and Log Analytics to uh, collect the log and see what's happening into my environment. I will leverage SQL DB and I will use Azure Blob Storage. And to see the performance, I will probably use um, application analytics as well. And then we see uh, going uh, uh, further into the architecture in the middle tier, putting Azure Active Directory and Azure Active Directory are back to access and delegate the access uh, to the resources. Then using Azure Load Balancer, using App Service Environment in order to run the data, um, the application tier, sorry, and using Azure Web App to execute the, uh, the environment. And on top of that, to protect access to, to those resources from the outside, we see that we will be leveraging uh, Azure Application Gateway, which is our uh, Layer 7 reverse proxy, which is an uh, inbox with uh, Azure that you can uh, leverage to do technologies like uh, OWASP uh, 3.0 uh, filtering for the Layer 7 application uh, uh, layer common attacks, and also all kind of SSL offloading if that's something that you want to leverage. So that's pretty much uh, the big picture of those guidance and this uh, blueprint will give you additional details, additional reading on uh, how every single of those layers provide compliance with the PCI standard. So in order to review that, let's just jump into the portal and look at what's available for us there. So during this first demo, I'm going to walk you through a couple of the items that are available online in order to discover more about privacy and compliance in the cloud. So it all starts with the Microsoft Trust Center, which is available on Microsoft.com. And that shows you basically the different aspect of what trusted cloud means for us, which is security, privacy, compliance, and transparency. So let's explore first one of the first pillar of that, which is privacy. So you can find there a couple of resources that what is privacy at Microsoft, and more specifically, we are here in the cloud governance and policy. And of course, you find here all the documentation around what does it mean to be uh, compliant in terms of uh, regulatory uh, requirements, uh, but also very fundamental questions like how do you protect my uh, data privacy? Where is my data? And that throughout the whole data life cycle in, uh, in the cloud. So you can find all documentation supporting that, including, you see, as you see here, resources like ISO 2718. Now, when you go to privacy, of course, one of the very important aspects that we see right now is uh, GDPR. So despite being defined first in uh, EU and applicable mainly in, in EU, actually it's applicable everywhere as long as you're processing data that are related to European citizens. So on uh, the Trust Center, you can find additional documents and additional resources on how uh, Azure or different other Microsoft technology help you being compliant with GDPR. So of course, the identity and the data protection technology, but also the security technologies that are available uh, in the cloud. Also, Azure and Office 365 helps you with the DSR, the data subject request. So basically customer or users might ask you with the providing all the data that you have around them in the cloud. So uh, you have to respond timely to that. So Azure help you into this particular process of GDPR compliance. A little bit closer to us in Asia Pacific, uh, we have also the DPA, so the Data Protection Act of the Philippines in 2012, and you can see that basically you have all the resources, same thing online, to describe you the different steps of being compliant with that. In terms of uh, compliance, one very important aspect in uh, Singapore and in the region as well is the MTCS. So the MTCS, uh, multi-tier cloud security standard for Singapore, Azure and other Microsoft technology has been compliant with it for years at level three, which is the highest level. So you can find the backgrounder, which shows you basically the fundamentals of uh, MTCS. So you can find here the link to the compliance, uh, the certificate, to the different different service of Microsoft clouds that are related, as well as a quick overview of how does it work and what are the different um, level. Now, how do you find all those trust documents? Well, it all starts on service trust, 
www.microsoft.com. So you need to be authenticated as long as you are an Azure customer, there's no problem for that. And you can find the different sections here. So mainly audit reports, data protection and security and compliance. So if we go to data protection, you will find here a set of documents that are related to the audited control and how do we, does it map with GDPR compliance for basically Azure, Office 365 and other clouds. Then you have compliance guide for different countries and different regulations in terms of data protection. You have a set of uh, frequently asked questions and white paper responses in order to, same thing, provide responses on your security and data protection posture. And you can find also online the pen test and security assessment report that we made uh, available uh, for you to review. In terms of audit reports, uh, this is a very important aspect of compliance. You can review and download here the different documents that are related to ISO, PCI DSS or SOC. So you can not only find uh, the certificate of compliance, but also the detailed audit report to see the different aspects of those compliance. And finally, one important aspect of the Service Trust Portal is you can find the Azure Security and Compliance Blueprint. So if you go there, you can find a set of documents that are basically baselining uh, for different industry or for different type of activities, some of the uh, typical architecture that we would recommend and would be compliant with the solution. So here, how do you build a PCI DSS compliant solution in, on top of IaaS or on top of PaaS? Then you have those different options with here for the different modes of deployment, the different uh, basically uh, responsibility metrics and implementation metrics that are responding to those uh, types of architecture. In terms of compliance, I want to finish with one document, which is the Azure Standard Response to RFI on security, privacy and compliance, which is something very useful for uh, customer or for um, partners that are responding to RFI and RFP. And it basically summarizes uh, all our typical uh, our security, privacy and compliance answers, all aligned with the CSA, uh, the Cloud Security Alliance, uh, the CCM version 3, so the Cloud Control Matrix. So it goes through all the aspects of it with you review the different response for the different aspects of privacy and you can uh, you reuse that document or as a baseline for your so we just seen what's available for you into the different portals for trust center and uh, stp uh, so what we have uh, also available for you is a set of technologies that you can enable inside your deployment so this as uh, this comes in four pillars so security management encryption, uh, networking, and partner solution. So by uh, security management, of course, we talk about identity and access. So it's all about our back and how do I manage the possible multi-factor authentication for the privileged user uh, to my environment? How do I do the data access control? What are the host protection technologies that are available? And one of the elements that we use into that, and we're gonna cover this in a, in a couple of minutes, is Azure Security Center. In terms of encryption, we have a set of technologies that are available for you for the different stage of the data uh, and the different state of the data. So is it data at rest or is it data uh, in, uh, in transport? So one of the technologies that we use it here is, for instance, Key Vault, which allows you to store secrets and keys. For instance, when you want to avoid storing secrets into the web, the, the web configuration file uh, to put the, the secret that will, store, uh, that will be stored to connect to the database, then you can use Key Vault and instead of putting the secret, putting the reference to the Key Vault so that the secret is protected even from an application layer attack. You can use that also Key Vault in order to store the keys that you would use to do a full disk encryption for your machines running on Azure. So when you're using BitLocker uh, for Windows or Dimcrypt for Linux VM, that's what you're going to use. You can also enable higher level of encryption at the application layer. For instance, if you use SQL Server, you can leverage TDE for transparent data encryption. And same thing, encrypt the database file running onto your Azure VM and store the keys inside Azure Key Vault as well. 
And it all starts with the fundamental, which is basically the networking. So how do you provide a network secure uh, infrastructure? So one of the many uh, layers that, uh, that we have here is basically Network Security Group, VPN, Experts Route, Azure Firewall. We're going to cover that in just a couple of minutes. And we also <coughs> appreciate that you uh, want to use um, any other vendor on the marketplace um, to provide you with security solutions. So you want to use Cisco, you want to use F5, you want to use Palo Alto, Barracuda. We're more than happy to provide you with them, available in a couple of clicks really a fundamental differentiator. You can enable that technology as fast as it has never been. Let's review uh, one of those aspects. So we see previously a little bit of a layered approach to, to security. Uh, so that's the usual, um, let's say, onion representation that we use for uh, networks uh, security inside, inside Azure. So you see at the very center your Azure deployment, your Azure VMs that you are running. And you see on the other side the internet. So one of the options when you use resources in Azure is to give them a public IP address. And this public IP address would be on the internet, so what are the layers of protection that we have from the internet to your very deployment? Well, you see that we have a whole set of layers that are uh, present here. So one of the first layer that you will hit is the DDoS uh, protection layer. So every single deployment that you use behind a public IP will have a DDoS protection layer. Whether it's the basic DDoS uh, layer, which is here to protect you, um, with not much of administration and not much of, uh, of control, or it's the standard offering which allows you much more control, much more visibility, and is based on AI uh, live analytics of the flows. Then you have the security of your endpoint. You go through the virtual network isolation, so as we mentioned, the different tenants uh, isolation. Then when we go deeper into the layer, we have the Network Security Group and uh, UDR. So Network Security Group is basically uh, layer four filtering rules that allow you to say, I want this TCP or this UDP flow on this specific port to go through. And UDR is user-defined routing. So that's the foundations that allow you to modify routing tables and make flows go one way or the other inside your environment. Now, I want to use why do you want to use to do that is basically uh, using network virtual appliances. So you'd say, for instance, I want all my traffic to go through additional IDS or IPS layers to be present inside an Azure VM. Then you can perfectly define that as a UDR rule. And you can go up to define, for instance, per host, uh, sorry, per VM uh, rules that say, I want to do service chaining. And even if machines inside Azure want to discuss with each other, I want that and go through the network virtual appliance for the filtering and then only go to the destination host. This is something that you can do with the SDN of Azure in, the, in your user space. So that's the approach for the security uh, uh, and the networking layer. So DMZ is dead long time ago, so long live the cloud DMZ. So basically, kind of typical uh, topologies that we use for customer cloud adoption would be to use Azure Virtual Network and then inside this Azure Virtual Network, as we mentioned, we will use Network Virtual Appliance. So Network Virtual Appliance and NVA is just basically one of the vendors that you might already have into your data center, Cisco, Palo Alto, Barracuda, and many others, as we mentioned previously. And you want to do that, uh, and you want to have them uh, in the middle of the traffic to do IDS, IPS purposes. So usually, this is what we do into the uh, topology. So this topology is a little bit simplified because you see that there's just one public uh, DMZ which will take the traffic from the public IP, and that will also take the traffic from the internal corporate network to go to the backend web tier of our Azure deployment. Now in real life, we probably see two levels of DMZ, one internal DMZ and one public facing DMZ, but that's just to, for you to get the idea around this deployment. One of the very interesting features that we have on Azure is the possibility to have enterprise-wide consolidated services. What do I mean by that? We see many customers adopting clouds and basically having adoptions of workloads by, by islands, which basically is a business unit buying with their credit card the possibility to deploy a workload into a specific virtual network where they put the couple of machines they're using and they put some basic level of security. Then comes another workload. 
Then comes another uh, cloud deployment with another set of technologies that are probably possible to consolidate and to have into central services. So that's exactly what we're working with customers uh, nowadays when they have a cloud enterprise adoption. We use hub and spoke cloud topology with uh, shared services. So instead of having each application and each workload that we deploy having their own security uh, controls, uh, very isolated, we deploy one level of uh, centralized security control and technology into what we see here in the picture as the hub virtual network. And in this hub virtual network we can put all the common and shared services like for instance the Active Directory subnets, the, the jump boxes that you will use to administer the VMs in the cloud, the different layers of DMZ, public or uh, private DMZ, and any other level of, uh, of inspections, uh, inspection devices. And what we do is then we create a virtual networks that will be peer with this shared services network. The advantage of this topology is those are very strong isolation uh, uh, boundaries. So a virtual network is the network boundary in, inside uh, Azure. So when you choose to do a VNet peering from one uh, central network to a virtual network, there's only communication that can happen between the central side and the hub and the spoke network. There's no spoke-to-spoke -spoke communication that happens, unless you define some rules into the central side to allow that, but it's by default not possible. So it offers for you, for instance, a strong isolation be between applications or strong isolation, for instance, between a dev and test and a production environment. The great advantage of VNet peering also is the, the fact that it is relying on Azure network backbone. So what I mean by that is you can have your hub virtual network inside one Azure data center in Singapore and you can have a VNet peering with another of the Azure data centers in Singapore. And for that, you don't need to use VPN gateway, you have the native Azure backbone that you're leveraging. So high speed and low latency network. This is good, but we have better than that. You can also leverage that into a multi-geo topology. So we have something called the global VNet peering, which means you can peer a virtual network inside Singapore to another virtual network in any other Azure data center in the world. Now, what it means is that instead of leveraging the public cloud infrastructure to make your two workloads communicate with each other, again, you are leveraging Azure network. You are leveraging Azure Backbone, fiber, dark fiber, between the different regions. Again, very high speed, very low latency, and Microsoft Network being one of the biggest uh, IP and biggest one in the world that offers you really with this possibility to deploy uh, really virtualized data center based on our cloud footprint. One of the technologies that uh, we are now able to leverage into this kind of topology is called Azure Firewall. So Azure Firewall is a new service which allows you to basically do filtering with cloud capabilities. By cloud capabilities, what do I mean? I mean that basically we can have the possibility to do filtering without uh, caring about the scalability of the network virtual appliance, without caring about the high availability of this uh, firewall. That really simplifies you a lot, the deployment of filtering rules. Uh, so those filtering rules are, for instance, uh, deploying uh, stateful firewall rules to define uh, a stateful TCP inspection, for instance. It also allows you to define, for instance, FQDN filtering, outbound SNAT uh, filtering support, and it is all integrated with Azure Monitor login. So it means that you have a virtual appliance that you don't need to care about because this is basically cloud native using all Azure uh, native capabilities. So you see one of the topology uh, examples here uh, that we can leverage in, um, and basically, this 
make no mistakes, it is not something that will replace any other technology. When you are deploying a technology on cloud, you are basically building a defense in depth method. So you would assume that every layer would have their own protection. So yes, Azure Firewall would offer you cloud native capabilities filtering that we mentioned previously, and it will come in complement around the network security group, which are basically the filtering between any uh, VM um, in, in Azure. It will come as a complement with the web application firewall. So if you need to do layer seven uh, protocol inspection and verification, that will be still part of the game. And it comes in complement about all the other technology that we mentioned previously. So the DDoS layers, the service endpoint restrictions and the network virtual appliance. Rather than talking further about this, I propose that we switch and have a view at this feature at work in a demo. So in this demo, let's review how Azure Firewall works. So in this demo, we use this very simple example from the tutorial. So if we look at the topology that we're going to use, so basically I'm going to use a jump box that I will connect from the internet. Uh, from this jump box, I will connect to a server. And this server, instead of uh, using the SNAT connection to the outside, we actually modified the routing table using uh, what we call UDR. Uh, for user-defined uh, routing and all its outgoing communication will go to Azure Firewall and this is Azure Firewall that will go and connect it through the internet. So from here we can be able to define a set of uh, security policy and inspection um, rules. So here we go, let's go to the environment. So I am into this resource group here where I have put all my objects uh, related to uh, this demo. So we see first that we have a virtual network. So in this virtual network, I have defined three subnets. So the jump box subnets on 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Then we have the Azure Firewall subnet on 10.0.1. And then we have the server subnet from 10.0.2.0. And out of that, I'm going to have basically a connection to the jump box uh, and then to the server. So the server is having an IP uh, address uh, which is only uh, private and it's actually uh, 10.0.2.4. Now, as, as we mentioned, uh, we define here an Azure uh, Firewall routing table. So here we see that from the server subnet uh, on 10.0.2.0 slash 24, I have said that the default route would be sent to 10.0.1.4 which is the IP address of Azure Firewall. So if we go to the firewall object here, we see that 10.0.1.4 is the IP address of this firewall. So let's go uh, to our environment. Now we see that I am on the jump box here and on the jump box on 10.0.0.4, I can do any type of communication. So I can ping uh, 8.8.8. .8 .8. uh, that's uh, the outbound uh, communication by default. I can connect via remote desktop to 10.0.0. Dot two dot four. So now I'm on the server subnet and here I'm going through the firewalls. So I cannot ping 8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 doesn't work and if I'm going to browse a uh, uh, server uh, internet from the server which by the way guys don't do that but let's uh, uh, say for the purpose of demo that you do I can go on www.microsoft.com uh, so it, it works and I cannot go, for instance, to a wonderful site, which is arnoldlerer.io because it says that basically, hey, HTTP request to arnoldlerer.io, no rule match. Uh, so uh, proceeding with the default action. So how does it work here? If we go back on the firewall here, we have the different uh, rules that are configured. And now I'm going to create a new rule for the application security. So I can create a new one or I can edit an existing one. And here we see that I have by default authorized traffic to everything uh, Microsoft.com. So we're going to create another rule here to um, enable traffic. Same thing to uh, the blog that we see just 
previously and I'm gonna enable everything dot my blog and then you save the rule and once it's applied we are going to test again into our environment so now that the rule is applied let's go back to our virtual machine and let's see if the traffic is now able to flow so we're going back to IE and we are going to refresh uh, the blog page so we validate the URL and we validate that we are now able to go to the web page and uh, see the content. So this is a very simple example that uh, shows you the filtering capability that we have with Azure Firewall. Now let's look at the login capability that we have with it. So we are back in the Azure portal and when we go to the diagnostic logs we have uh, here the configuration for the logs and you see that I have configured basically uh, two items out of the tree. So you can configure a sending log to log analytics, which is what I do into this uh, container. Then we also have the possibility to store uh, the log into the storage account for longer term retention. And here you see that I'm exporting Azure Firewall application rule, network rule, and all the metrics that are related to that. So I can use uh, log analytics to do the query into that. I can also use the export in Power BI for that. But if we want to look at the longer term uh, retention information, I'm going to use Storage Explorer. And you see here that AZ Firewall log, that's the uh, repository the storage account that I use here and then I'm using the insight log Azure firewall and I can download here the whole uh, log for the day as a JSON file so here you can see that I have the complete log file of whatever has been uh, requested to this environment so we can see the the match uh, and uh, the application um, rule that has been matched for consulting the, the firewall, uh, for consulting the blog, as you can see here, arnolero.io action uh, allow because app rc1 is applied here. So that's it for this demo and for the very quick exploration and first step with Azure Firewall. So we see Azure Firewall, which is one of the new features of Azure that allow you to do cloud native filtering. Now let's view a little bit around security of operations inside Azure. One of the things that is for sure is when you are going to cloud, you're going to have more and more and more systems that you're going to manage. So how do you keep up with this uh, pace and this number of VM and this number of systems that you want to administer? Well, the answer is very simple, automation and policy and policy verification. So Security Center is actually here to offer you that and many more uh, features. Security Center allows you to have a centralized view on all of your VMs that are deployed into your Azure subscription, but not only. It's also a hybrid security technology which you can leverage from any other cloud platform, even your private cloud environment. It then allows you to analyze the security automatically uh, based on a set of baseline that you define. And this baseline would be patch management, would be security hardening for the operating system, would be presence of uh, additional uh, software for uh, security enforcement. This will allow you to check that and gives you dashboard to report on those features live. We mentioned the compute environment. It's of course covering uh, networking and it's of course covering uh, storage as well. One of the value proposition of uh, Azure Security Center is really that it's inbox of the platform. So you can define actually a policy at your subscription level that will automatically enroll every resource you put in the cloud to be deployed and analyzed against a policy that you define. And you can go further than that uh, by adding additional and advanced security feature. One thing I forgot to mention is that Azure Security Center is free. So there's a default tier which is free and allows you to do those basic security analysis that we mentioned. There's also um, an advanced version which allows you to check additional security, check additional things like, for instance, just-in-time VM administration and application security controls. We're going to cover that into uh, the demo. So without further waiting, let's look at Azure Security Center at work.
Okay, so we are in our Azure subscription. Let's go to the security center. So the first contact we have with it is the dashboard, which shows you the overall level of um, compliance with the policy, uh, resource uh, or hygiene uh, of security, and the threats that has been detected into your environment. So the first thing we want to see, what is the coverage and what is the security policy that is applied to my environment? So if I go coverage, we see that we have uh, different levels of coverage. The basic coverage, which is uh, free, and the standard coverage, which is um, here display and is enabled for my uh, subscription that give me all the features from the security security center. Now if I go to the security policy, I here here uh, have this subscription and if I go edit settings, I will see that automatically this subscription is enabled for auto provisioning. So any resource that I put up into my environment will be scanned for security and will be exposed through this uh, uh, workspace. We can see that I have automatic email notification and I have security configuration that I can edit. So if we go back to the security policy uh, of my environment, we can see that we have rules related to compute and apps like system updates, security configuration and baselines, uh, endpoint protection, disk encryption and vulnerability assessment made by Microsoft or by third parties and adaptive application control. We have rules that are related to network and rules that are related to data as well and it's all enabled in my environment so we're going to review in a minute what's behind all of that. So in the overall policy of my environment I can then go back and have an overview of the resource security hygiene. So if we go to recommendation we have a list of all the recommendations that are applicable to my uh, environment and that based on the fundamentals of cloud which are basically identity, data uh, and storage, uh, network and uh, compute. So if we go to the details of those aspects, we can see that in terms of data and storage, I have uh, an analysis of the storage account and analysis of the SQL configuration in my environment. We can see that for uh, networking, we have an overview of the different aspects of network security in, in Azure. So here we have different aspects, like we can see that those internet facing endpoints are not protected because there are no network security group and no next generation firewall. So we have uh, a possibility here to view quickly the different networks and the different uh, uh, endpoints that are on those networks. So if I go, for instance, to NSG on subnet not enabled, I can see that those networks, those uh, subnets have no network security group. So there's no ACLs on the communication uh, happening on those networks. You know, if we go here to the restrict internet uh, uh, endpoint, we see that those IP endpoints basically are not protected. Uh, so it will uh, recommend me to restrict the endpoint of probably incoming TCP connection to RDP, not to every source, but to limited source. Uh, we can see uh, uh, in uh, this uh, demo that we also have something which is called just-in-time uh, VM uh, access, which can help you dynamically uh, sort this, uh, this problem. Another aspect that we want to review here is the next generation firewall not installed. So what does that mean? Uh, here you can see that those IP, uh, I just basically open a bunch of ports uh, from the public IP internet. Now what Azure Security Center is going to recommend me is to add a solution which will do layer 7 inspection on top of this port and not just uh, layer 4 uh, basically ports opening. So we can see that it helps you spinning up directly an NGF firewall that will help you to protect the resources. And this can be a Barracuda, this can be Checkpoint, Cisco, Fortinet, Palo Alto. And if you click there, we're going to basically guide you through the creation of those resources automatically. So it helps you protect the resources in a very uh, guided uh, and integrated way. That's for the network. Now let's review Compute and Apps.
Now, in computer apps, here you see all your computers, all the virtual machines in this environment. And if we go to VM and computer, we have an overview of machines that are uh, here, all of them by default in Microsoft Azure. You can also click Add Computer and basically download an agent that will allow you to install that uh, evaluation of security on other cloud platforms or on your premises, on, on your data center. Now, if we look at the overview, we see that we have a set of uh, recommendation and action items here. We can see that endpoint protection issues, for instance, we have some of our machines in our environment that have either no uh, security endpoint enabled or no uh, or has been uh, detected some malware. So here we can see that they're all, uh, no malware has been detected, but actually uh, uh, some of the VM are no endpoint enabled. So I can directly click here, install on two VM, and it will allow me to select and deploy a security endpoint. So I can dynamically uh, deploy here Microsoft anti-malware on the box right from here, and it will install the, the anti-malware solution right away. I don't need to log in into the server, it's gonna be done automatically from here. An interesting aspect is as well the missing disk encryption. Uh, so as we see here, uh, some of the machines have no disk encryption. So you can enable Azure disk encryption to have additional level of uh, protection, which you will use a BitLocker and Azure Key Vault to store um, the keys. Another recommendation that we see here is a web application firewall. So we see that on this uh, IP address, I have basically open port 443 or port 80. And same thing, I haven't uh, do any, uh, haven't enabled any additional protection. So it enables me to deploy either Microsoft Application Gateway, which is our layer seven uh, web application firewall solution, or you can also deploy it from third party vendors. If you prefer Barracuda, F5, Fortinet of Imperva, that's absolutely fine with us. And same thing, uh, you will be guided through the set of the solution. Then uh, we have a security configuration. So we can uh, review uh, recommendation that we give to, to our customers. So uh, in terms of critical warning and informational, you can take uh, uh, action to harden your security uh, uh, environment and your security configuration. So you can see here that's the recommendation based on the CCE recommendation. We're giving more information and more background. So this is what Azure gives you automatically and it concerns Windows as well as uh, Linux. Important aspect, it's not only Microsoft solution as you already see multiple times for the web application firewall or for the next generation firewall. But also you can enable additional solution from third parties for assessing the security and the vulnerability of an environment. So we have integration with Qualys and Rapid7 at the time uh, of uh, the, this recording and we can enable automatically the deployment of an agent of those um, uh, solutions on the VM uh, to uh, Azure and automatically we'll see a consolidated report here of the vulnerability that has been discovered and the recommended action to protect you from that, uh, from those uh, from those vendors, from the example of Qualys here. So you have this central view here and you also have the view of course in Qualys um, solution. So very good uh, integration. Uh, we can enable uh, with many uh, third party security solutions. So I mentioned uh, a couple of them already. You can also add Azure to your CM. So you can connect the security information and even management solution, which is either on a cloud or on your premises. You can connect the log and you can also add additional uh, security from other, uh, other vendor as you can see, as you can see here. Now that we've seen the vulnerability assessment and the security hygiene, just want to show you some of the uh, security alerts uh, that are available. So in my environment, nothing much happening. A very classical RDP brute force attack. Here you can see the IP address, uh, which uh, resources has been um, has been targeted. And you can also see the security alert map. So you can see uh, which IP endpoint has been uh, targeting your machine and you can consolidate that with, of course, other uh, security information that you have in your environment. 
we can have and we can define uh, custom alert rules. So having um, a specific email when some specific additional criteria are met. And very importantly, you can define playbooks. So a playbook is basically a workflow that will be executed when a security uh, event has been detected. So as much as you are building your security environment inside Azure, you will create also with a, a logic app um, a rules that will automate your security response to vulnerabilities that are, have been detected or security event that has been detected. Now I want to end this uh, overview of the security center with three very cool uh, features. One of them is called Phi Integrity Monitoring and it allows you to analyze the change that has happened into an environment in terms of uh, files. For instance, when a machine has been compromised, uh, um, maybe the hackers have changed uh, uh, some registry key, maybe they have changed some Windows files or some Linux files, then you can enable the monitoring of that and what will show you is a dashboard of all the change that has happened inside this environment. So very useful when you're doing security uh, investigation. And another aspect of security that we know is, uh, is complicated is the application whitelisting. So we know it's complicated because it's establishing first a baseline of what code is running onto your environment and then defining the policy of what is the legitimate code that is allowed to run and all the rest will not be enabled on the machine. So Azure Adaptive uh, Application Controls enabled to uh, make it very easy to baseline uh, the security configuration of an environment and then deploy policies. So here I did a first group. This first group basically is two virtual machines and uh, it's basically domain controllers. They're doing nothing else but domain controller role. And uh, Azure has detected that basically uh, based on uh, what's present on the system, maybe just a whitelist rule based on the certification on the Microsoft Code Signing Authority is, uh, is enough because there's nothing else that needs to run onto this domain controller. Then you can of course define pass whitelisting or also hash uh, whitelisting rule. So here automatically we have the hash whitelisting rule for the scripts coming of um, Azure uh, CSE so that you can apply a security configuration out of a script to the environment. Now you have just-in-time uh, VM access. I was mentioning previously that uh, when you publish IP, uh, when you publish solution behind an IP endpoint, a public IP endpoint, uh, you are uh, not restricting with the right IP and the right uh, TCP uh, or UDP uh, rules. So one of the things that we allow with uh, just-in-time VM access is enable dynamic network security group to be applied when you need to access the machine. So here, for instance, I have a jump box and I want to say, okay, the port for this jump box is, is open, uh, not all the time, but just when I need to do it. So let's take the example of this jump box and I will say the port 22 will be open on TCP only. And it will allow the, from the source IP that will be specifying the request and I can pre-specify that or I can force that uh, beforehand and I can say that the port will remain open for one hour and automatically then would be removed. So I can enable that uh, for all of my uh, public IP endpoint. And if I go back to uh, the solution and to the configured solution, you can see that here uh, we have this machine and I can, I can open request access here. And I can say, hey, I want to have a request on 3389 on the RDP from my IP address and then for that amount of time, so two hours is enough, so I can do open port and then automatically I will be granted and after the two hours that are specified, then the port uh, will be automatically and the ACLs will be automatically uh, removed. So it drastically uh, uh, reduces the exposition surface of, of a VM. And of course I can then review the activity log, I can review who has asked access to this environment and then I can see uh, the details of the login here. And I can, of course, add activity uh, log uh, alert because it might be interesting that I receive an email when everybody does a request for uh, that particular feature. So that's it for the very quick uh, overview of uh, Azure Security Center. 
So how does Azure get into your world security landscape and security picture? Very often we have customers say, hey, uh, Azure is now becoming part of my uh, production environment. I need to integrate that into my security solutions. And security solution, one of the very fundamental aspects is uh, CM. So CM stands for Security Information and Event Management uh, System. And it's basically a central repository for anything security happening on your infrastructure. Of course, you want to keep a log uh, of your security events of the production system. In case of the compromission of the production system, you still have some uh, log repository where you can analyze and do investigation on what happened. So that's why we use a CM solution. So there's a very uh, uh, integration that we can leverage. So of course, as we uh, mentioned, every action, every operations that you do in, uh, in Azure uh, is, uh, is log and you can extend that to uh, any further deep thing happening onto your VM to be log. Now what we have the possibility to do is we can integrate security center and monitoring uh, event into our event hub platform and from the event hub actually we can make the collection of those events directly through our uh, SIAM integration components. So for now we're supporting in preview uh, three SIAM uh, uh, vendors that uh, are very popular on the market. So IBM Curator, uh, Splunk, and Sumo Logic, they all have plugins that we can leverage, connect to uh, Event Hub, and uh, make sense of the security event and integrate that into your bigger uh, corporate security picture. So that's available for you to um, to evaluate. It's in preview as we speak, and we are listening to uh, additional vendors' uh, possibility to make connection and plugins. So. That's it for this session. You see that this is really a summary of uh, some of the security features. We're gonna go deeper into those features as we progress into this series of, um, of events. I hope it's give you, it gives you a great overview on the compliance information, where to get the compliance information when you're going live with a deployment, and also give you an overview of the Azure security controls and as well the technologies that you can enable into your user space when you're using Azure. Thank you for your attention. Uh, please now bring all your questions and uh, happy to answer any of them.